I will show you how to make your first beat using the Novation Circuit Rhythm. So the first thing is, how do you load sounds on this thing? So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you plug up your circuit rhythm using the type C cord that was provided by Novation and then plug it to your computer via the type A port and then we're gonna turn it on. So let's go ahead and turn it on and you'll see that it's powering up and it'll be go through its loading process of all the samples that exist already. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is go to the website. So we're gonna go to novationmusic.com. Boom, let's go ahead and do that. And now you'll see that I'm logged in already, but you might need to log in. So go ahead and log in. If you don't have an account, uh, make sure that you register your account or sign up for a new account or create account. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that sign right here. And you can see that my Novation Circuit Rhythm is registered. I'm gonna to go to my software, uh, which is this tab right here. And then I'm gonna scroll down until I see the component software. All right. So you have three different choices. You can use Components Web. You can use the standalone component software for Windows or Mac. So if you have a MacBook or whatnot, uh, you have software for it as well as Windows there for that OS. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use the Components Web, which only works on Google Chrome for my testing. It does not work on Safari, seeing that I'm using a MacBook right now. I'm going to go and click on that and then make sure that you click on Circuit Rhythm, which is the unit we're talking about. All right, so we're getting started here. And the first thing I want to show you is this right here, because if you open up your Circuit Rhythm or the Circuit Tracks, it will tell you to update the firmware. Uh, my firmware is up to date, but you might have to press a button and let it update the firmware. I do recommend that you do this on the Google Chrome if you're going to use the components web because uh, it does not work on Safari. I'm just repeating it just in case. I'm going to go back to packs here and you'll see get started, get packs from Circuit Rhythm, create pack, upload a pack. So what we're going to do is create a pack. So let's create a pack here. All right, you'll see that you can rename it whatever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename it something. So let's do that. I just name it Toot right here because this is important to getting sound inside of your Novation Circuit Rhythm because you only have like two options and that's just the component software and recording stuff in, which I'll show in a separate video. Uh, you can do a couple of things on here, but what I want to do is just load up some samples. So let's go ahead and load up some samples real quick. I'm going to go into my finder and then I'm going to go to a folder that has samples in it. So it, it will be different for everybody else. So just make sure that you know where all your samples are. Uh, I'm going to navigate into here and I have a couple of sounds that I like. Uh, one thing I will tell you is there is a sample limit. Uh, you can only uh, upload 300 seconds of sound and that's after the firmware update. So make sure that you know that. And you also shouldn't load samples that exceed over four bars. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a limitation of this, but you know, I just want to point that out just in case you have any issues. But I'm going to go over here and select Slump Loops 9. I will have links in the description to all my samples and stuff like that. And uh, once you, you can hear, it, you can preview the sounds. This works very well on uh, MacBooks here. Uh, Windows, you'll have to do a little something different, but that's one thing I like about the MacBooks there. So say I wanted that sound. It's as simple as me just dragging and dropping it in here and rinsing and repeating. So the sample is here. You can press on it and hear it. All right. And then you can do other things too. When you uh, make your kit, you can do beat repeater. You can do different grid effects, which we'll talk more about later on in the video. And you can load or save projects. So just make sure that you know that when you're navigating it. But I have this pack right here. And yeah, I can leave this page, but uh, I recommend saving it. So let me go back, stay on this page real quick and then hit save and you'll save it right on there. Tutorials or toot for this. And it's going to save this pack 
and it'll be right there for next time when you want to reorganize things or change things up. But I have a pack ready. So here's my pack. It's called the Biz, and I have a couple of samples here. And what I can do is I can send it to the circuit rhythm. I can download the samples or, or remove a sample or samples. And when you send it to your circuit rhythm, know that those limitations do exist. So if you can't send it to your circuit rhythm, then you might either need to uh, get a micro SD card, which you can get up to 32 gigs and make sure that it's class 10 for it to be able to work. Class 10 minimal. So after everything is done, you don't need the type C core for anything else. So I'm going to unplug it and then I'll plug up my circuit rhythm so you can hear the audio. And the next thing I'm going to do is just preview the sounds on the circuit rhythm, see if they made it there. Uh, you can navigate uh, to next, the next page by pressing on this down arrow right here. And hearing all the sounds. So the first thing I want to show you is this right here. So you have eight tracks. So that's what that represents. And you have eight parameter knobs right up here. And then you have a fixed knob right here, where it's for the master filter. And then you have a knob for your master volume. So when you're operating with this, you'll notice one thing that it is monophonic so you can't play samples at the same time so you have access to eight tracks so this is one through eight and these also double as patterns so if you press the patterns uh, you can see that you have patterns and these are clips basically so we'll get more into that i won't confuse you right now but i just want to show you that and then you have eight corresponding parameter knobs where you can manipulate your sample and you have a master filter in which is a fixed encoder versus these endless encoders and you have a master volume right here. So let's go to sample mode right here where you can play back the samples again. And I'm gonna demonstrate something by playing these three samples right here. So you'll notice off top that you cannot play uh, one track or these samples uh, polyphonically. And that's because they are monophonically per track. Now, that will seem like an issue to you, but this is how you would get over that. So if you press shift and sample record, you're brought into drum pad mode. Uh, you can also double click this button and you will be brought into drum pad mode as well. Now, the main thing I want to show you is this. So you see that these sound different. So when you're using drum pad mode, you have note repeat. And you can latch. So if you want to do any uh, trap stuff on the circuit rhythm, you can. Uh, but the most important thing is this pad layout. So even though this makes sense to be the first pad, this is the fifth pad. So basically, if I was going to track number five, that's the sample that I selected, right? So I'm going to go back into drum pad mode. And on track number six, you'll see that I selected that sound. So if I selected a hi-hat and I went back into drum pad mode, it became a hi-hat. So I'm going to go back into the sample over here, select it again, then go back into drum pad mode. And you can just drum off. All right. So with that being said, you can see that these pads right below it represent one, two, three, and four. So you can see uh, that they are represented on here. So the next thing I wanna do is this right here. So I wanna show you how to set up tempo because we're gonna start with creating a beat because that's what this is about, right? So I'm gonna press this button right here, which is tempo swing and set up a BPM. So right now it's on 87 BPM. If you Use this knob right here, uh, this parameter knob, you can adjust the BPM of the track. So I have it on 87 and everything is good to go, right? Uh, you can also uh, choose to do swing, like right here. I'm gonna set it back to 50% because I would just want normal swing or you can set it up to, it looks like 
So let's go back down to 50. And you can go negative all the way down to 20 and so forth. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is show you how to record stuff in. There's two different ways to put data into the circuit rhythm. Now, what I'm gonna do is just go to track number two and I'm gonna press this hi-hat right here because that's what I wanna use for right now. So what I can do is use this because this is a sequence right here. This is how you edit in steps, so step sequence, right? So what I'm gonna do is I, I got this highlighted so that represents the hi-hats. You can see that. You can also have up to 32 steps. So if I wanted to press uh, the 116 and 17 to 32, I can have 32 steps. And let's see, you, you can see the playhead move through it. The white square. And it, all right. So, you know, that is one way that you can edit stuff in. And if you want to delete stuff, you can by clicking on it one more time on this step sequencer and you don't have anything on there. There is another way that you could do that by going into pattern and going into that actual clip and holding clear and then pressing on that and it will erase everything within that thing. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll demonstrate that pad. Let me go erase pattern here, go back into sample and you'll see everything has cleared up, okay? But now, there's another way to record, and this is where I will introduce you to back. We're going to go back into drum mode, and I'm going to press, let's see here, drum mode, and I'm going to press record, quantize, and play. Well, that seems a bit problematic, right? It's really hard to tell what is going on, and, and that's for a reason. So is there a click track? Let's find out. So let's go ahead and press shift and clear and we get a click track. So that will help with drumming. All right, all right, so let's record something in. There is no pre-roll, by the way, guys, so there's no pre-count to my knowledge. All right, so we have a drum line there, uh, and I already put the hi-hats in there. I'm not expecting you to do that, but you know, that's just something, all right? Uh, so, just like other things that you observe, if you go into like that specific track, then you will see that you know you have your hi hats laid out right here. So maybe if you don't like those hi hats, uh, you can do another thing, or you can notice that my drums in itself uh, were kind of like locked in. How do you unquantize? So by pressing Shift and the record quantize, you'll see that it turned itself off and what we're going to do here is this so i'm going to go back to uh, drum pad and i'm going to test that theory out i want to make sure i have a click track ready boom and i'm going to enter the hi-hats in And you can see I have more of a real feel to it now. Now, if I go to pad number seven, uh, there's another feature called uh, micro step. So if I press shift and micro step, I can go over here and have access to where I want to put my hi hats uh, just in case I didn't like them. So let's go ahead and uh, put it right over here. And you know, I could just select whatever and, and change it. You can even put you can actually put like your hi-hats in different areas if you want to do triplets or something like that. And if that's not your thing, just delete it and go back with what you want. So you can adjust that. You can do micro adjustments, micro steps, micro adjustments. So now let's go back in the drum pad and record the drum line. And 
and so forth. So if I want to adjust that uh, kick, let's go ahead and adjust the kick real quick. And now we have more of a funkier feel to our drums on the circuit rhythm. That's important for like hip hop if you want to do kind of a boom bap style. So how do you chop samples? Well, it's pretty easy to do. Let me show you. So now that we have that stuff accomplished, what I'm going to do here is just make a couple of adjustments to the kick. All right. All right. And now I'm going to go into track one because track one is something I want to do. So I, I'm going to clear out track one and we're gonna look for a sample, all right? So. I like that. So what I'm gonna do is keep this selected. So. The next thing I need to do is go into this mode right here by pressing shift and sample to go into sample mode. So in sample mode, you can change multiple things with the sample that you're in. You can do one shot, gated, loop, reverse choke, uh, keyboard, and slice. So if I want to go ahead and do slice, I will select slice and then you have different increments here. So if I was to pick this and then go back and go. So if I was to select this right, so if I was to select this right here, this division, and go into note mode, you see that I only have four chops. Mm -hmm. But if I was to go back and press this right here and go into note mode, you see I have eight chops. Right? And now let's go into this division right here, which has the most amount of chops. All right. And now you'll start to see uh, where the magic starts to happen uh, with the chopping. So the main thing you probably want to do is just lay out your chops so you can do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give a longer count for my chops in. But what if I wanted to adjust uh, this this sample, this sample chop right here? Well, you can. You can do it two ways. You can adjust it by missing the start. And you can get micro adjustments by holding shift and pressing start. just this chop right here. Uh, you can also do length, which you can make your chops shorter. If you have, and you can tune, but it affects the whole entire thing. So let's go ahead and record that in. So now that you see some of the magic happening, uh, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit more intricate things that you could do. Uh, you can change, uh, if you like fixed velocity, you can change the velocity of a pad. So, you know, if I wanted to do fixed velocity on one pad or so, 
So I can do so. Uh, and you know, I can change it from right here. So that was on uh, the second page, which is 17 to 32 on that. So from here, now say if that sample is too like busy or I want to get rid of some of the bass, uh, you can mess with this parameter right here, which is low pass filter, and this will take away bass. That's the bass right there. Well, this is low pass, meaning that it affects the low frequencies. I don't mean it takes away uh, low frequencies, that it gives it uh, low frequencies if you go and if attenuate it to the left. But uh, in hindsight of that though, and let's go ahead and uh, mess with high pass filtering, which if you want the bass out of it, you get rid of the bass. In retrospect, you can also add resonance, which is not useful on samples. Like it would be for any other instrument. Uh, there's also a slope and there's distortion too, but we're gonna talk about that a little later. But remember, you can retune. So now that we have that going, uh, I'm gonna move forward. And let's say, we have this sound right here. So we have this sound and we know that we don't like the way it's being played. Uh, we can adjust it against. So let's make this a little bit more plucky. And it has like this weirdness to it that I want to change on this particular sound. So what I'm going to do here is show you something else, which is effects. So we're going to go over here to effects and we notice that these different parameter knobs now will apply to whatever effect that you have. Now it's a difference between these right here where it's a crap ton in the manual, uh, but you can have different effects like, let's go ahead since we're on two. Let's go ahead and lay that out real quick. So let's go back to number two here. And I wanna play this chromatically, I can. I'll just go ahead and make this a little longer. And let it loop over. Adjust it on the fly so you can get so you can work with it. Uh, you can also, and this is where I want to introduce certain things too, uh, were a little bit, and that is mixing. So let's go into the mixer over here, and then I'm gonna show you where it correlates to the tracks. Every track color you'll see so you don't get confused. And then also you'll see a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is track number eight, this is track number one. So I wanna adjust that sound, so let's do that. And what I just did right here was uh, mute that track. So if you're in mixer mode, that mutes those tracks. So that's kind of good for performances too. So now that we talked about the mixer briefly, uh, we can talk about certain things uh, like effects. Let's go ahead and talk about effects and how they work so far. Uh, so uh, we have that sound. So this parameter right here, which is track number two, I, it applies the amount. So it sends that effect, which is a reverb, I believe. All 
right, so now that we've played with that, we can talk about grid effects. So grid effects is over here. So what I'm gonna do is just press mixer uh, twice. Uh, you can also do this right here where you press shift and mixer and it'll take you to grid effects. Uh, so keep that in mind. You got double tapping or just shifting and whatever. Uh, so you have different effects that you can use. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute that sound for right now. So it starts with the beat repeater. Gator. And then I believe that's like flange or auto filter. There is a way to latch these effects. So if you hit this right here, you hit this pad and make it illuminate, uh, you can go ahead and latch those effects. So if you want to have that in your beak, sort of like all the way through, you can. But remember, uh, per category, it only latches to that effect. So I can have flange, turn it off, but if I can't have the two different low fives. So as you can see, uh, you will have to press it again to unlatch it, or you can do this and turn it off. So that's pretty much how you would uh, approach making your first beat, but there are other things that I want to cover. So I'm gonna continue this uh, right now. Since we're talking about effects, here's an effect that I think, uh, or a quick tip that'll work. So I'm gonna go over here to the kick. This is the kick track right here. And use distortion. All right, so you saw that I added some distortion to the kick. But uh, what I wanna show you is there is a ways to manipulate this kick and filter out all the extra distortion. So this is a good way to make your drums knock harder. filter so I'll kick up this is my original kick so and so forth so uh, you can continue to play with these and maybe add resonance Yeah, and it's a good way to do uh, your snares too, so. And let's go ahead and adjust the mouth. Yeah, so you can You can continue to mess with your uh, samples any way that you want, uh, no matter which track that you're on. It, it will only adjust uh, these parameters individually per track. So that's a plus if you're uh, wondering that about the circuit rhythm. So there's one more effect that I wanna show you and that is side chaining. And how do you do that? So what I'm gonna do here is press shift. So make sure you press shift and the effects button. I'm gonna press play and you can select any of these right here and you'll hear side chaining so what if i want the kick track to side chain and not the whole track to side chain well uh, you would select the kick So 
I can affect it, you know, have a slide chain a little bit. So, tell me how you feel about this video. I definitely wanna hear from you guys in the comment section. Well, I've already done a review on the Novation Circuit Rhythm and I plan on doing more tutorials as I will ask you guys in the comment section, you know, uh, what do you want next? But again, I really like this machine, you know, portable unit, you know, compact size, uh, you know, no screen really doesn't bother me. I mean, it won't bother you after you get used to it. Uh, premium IO, that is something that you can't pass up. Uh, yeah, it's worth checking this out at its price point of $400, uh, especially if you're into sample based brew boxes. And you know, this is something that will probably have a little bit more charm as the time goes past, you know, the aftermarket will will probably explode for this, you know, if you know need it be, you know how that thing works. But yeah, uh, just let me know how you feel about this in the comment section. I definitely want to hear from you guys. Yeah, pretty good.